Thanks, Kevin. Uh, thank you for having me today. I'm a PhD student from UC Denver working under Larry Hunter and also fortunate enough to frequently collaborate with Kevin. I'm here to talk to you today about a project that actually grew out of last year's biohackathon in collaboration with Olivier Bodenreiter. Thank you. So we're no longer living in the era of not having enough data to analyze. In fact, I'd argue until our methods to really utilize this data catch up, we probably have more than we can handle. Um, I see that as a good thing, though. And in fact, a recent article found that uh, by 2020, we're predicted to have over 25,000 petabytes of health data, uh, which is a ton. And what's great about this is it's, it's multi-dimensional data, and it's from a bunch of different sources. So the potential to really start getting and answering some of these big questions is now starting to be really possible and to be possible at a scale that's bigger than it's ever been before. Uh, so a challenge that we're now switching from, from having enough data is really becoming, what do we do with this data and how do we effectively and intelligently do things with it? Um, and so one, one of the reasons that we're all here is that that discovery is really about synthesizing what's in the literature and putting it to use with these other sources of data. So to go from having data and information, but to get insight and then wisdom from that data to start to answer big questions, but to do it in a really knowledge-driven fashion. So what we have so far is robust body of peer-reviewed literature. We have lots of rigorously developed algorithms, and I'd argue that we have impressive collections of concept annotated corpora. What we need and what we don't yet have is large-scale annotation of relations for these corpora between the annotated concepts. Um, this is a really challenging thing to do, and it's hard to do, and I think that's probably one of the main reasons we don't yet have it, not to say that concept annotation isn't also challenging. Oops, sorry. Um, so one thing that, we, that I got out of last year with working with Olivier is thinking about utilizing resources that might help us start to fill in the gap for relations um, at scale. And so one of those sources is the National Library of Medicine's Semantic Knowledge Representation Project, which has both concept and relation annotations to title and abstracts for publications uh, extracted from Medline. So they have this for over 26 million articles, totaling over 91.6 million predications, so predications being triples. And on average, they have about eight triples per article there. So it's good coverage, I'd argue. <laughs> so what we'd like to do here is to transform these predications into a linked format that's compatible uh, with what pub annotation has in terms of their schema for representing these resources. Um, and by doing that, we'd like to then extend what's covered already. And then eventually there's work we'd like to do with mapping the concepts that are already there to different OBO um, ontologies and concepts, uh, as well as then utilize this robust coverage of relations that have been annotated for algorithm development. So I won't go too much into this, but this is a snapshot of what the schema, the text annotation ontology schema that pub annotation uses to represent their concept annotations. And Jin Dong, I might have pulled these numbers from when the endpoint was down, but so far there's uh, over 180 projects, over 11 million articles annotated uh, from PubMed and 11,000 PMC articles that have deeper annotations. Um, so this is already a really great resource to use. And I'll argue with a simple example, and I apologize, this might be small. Um, so this is an article that's annotated in pub annotation, but also has some rep annotations to it. And so what you currently have for the annotations from pub annotation um, is shown here. And again, it's small, so don't worry about reading the detail. This is just to, to demonstrate. When we add what we can pull from stem rep for this same article, we then get coverage that looks like this. So we can extend to almost all of the sentences there that were originally annotated, but cover them deeply, and in some cases even overlap the existing annotations, which is ideal. Um, and this is really small too. So this summer I worked a little bit with Jin Dong and with Olivier to try to use the schema that they already have in place, um, but extending it in ways that Jin Dong had already envisioned to the SEMREP uh, predications. And so what we'd, I'd like to do during this week is really finalize the schema, 
make sure everyone is happy or as happy as we can get everyone with it, and then actually generate the triples. Um, so again, refine the knowledge representation, convert it to RDF, and I've worked with Olivier and Tom Rindeflesh that if we can get this into RDF, they'll actually make it as a downloadable resource uh, on the UMLS as well, which would be really nice, um, instead of actually having to pull the MySQL database down to use. And we'd like to automate the build process from scratch and then we'll also, because the UMLS is a licensed resource and so is the concept annotations from it, uh, we're working through how we can make this as open as possible without violating the license uh, and upsetting them as well. So we'll document that process because I think it's valuable for people that want to use similar licensed resources in as much of an open way as they can. I mean, I'd like to sincerely thank the program and organizing committees for having me, um, and specifically Jin Dong and Kevin for continuing to support my visions and fun projects, and as well as my co-authors and my advisor Larry for letting me be here. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>